Hi traders, welcome to another edition of Trading Tips brought to you today by First Hour Trading. Check them out at firsthourtrading.com and by the way, these guys are awesome. You can learn how to make enough money in the first 59 minutes of trading to take off and do whatever you'd like for the rest of the day. It's a very powerful system. Highly recommend them. Check them out, firsthourtrading.com. Today's edition is one of my favorites. It's chart attack number three, average true range, also known as the ATR. This is really, in my opinion, sort of the, the keystone, if you will. If, if you use moving averages, Bollinger Bands, and volume, ATR sort of ties it all together because it gives us a nice way, a nice numerical way to identify just how volatile a stock is. And again, it helps us to position both our stop losses and leads us to a realistic profit target. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So what is ATR? It's a question, again, that a lot of people don't really know the answer to. I've, I've run across many traders over the years and those who aren't really savvy have, may have heard the term and they just say, oh, average true range and um, or average trading range and, and they really can't define it. So essentially what an ATR is, is it's basically a, a rolling average. Generally, it's 14 periods of a stock's greatest movements. Let me repeat that. A rolling 14-day or 14-period average of a stock's greatest movements. You can use it in any time frame. In other words, you can look at a one-minute ATR, which will tell you sort of the average trading range of a stock or an index over a minute's time. You could look at a daily ATR. You could look a weekly or a monthly. The bottom line is it works in just about any chart. ATR is always expressed as a dollar amount. So if I were to say that IBM, for instance, has an ATR of $2.50 in its daily chart, that means that for the past 14 days or so, two weeks, the stock has been moving roughly $2.50 per day. Look at this, these last points here. The true range is the largest of the most recent periods high minus the most periods low the absolute value of the most recent period's high minus the previous close, or the absolute value of the most recent period's low minus the previous close. So again, ATR takes the largest of these three numbers and uses that in its average. The goal here, remember, let's say a stock gaps down, okay? But the next day after it gaps down, let's say it gaps down $5 and only moves I don't know, a dollar the next day. ATR would actually count that $5 gap. So how do we use ATR? Well, one of the biggest benefits to ATR is a tool to use to set realistic goals. Think about it like this. You know, you can take a quick glance at a chart and again, using IBM as an example, which we'll take a look at a real one in just a second here. Let's say IBM has a daily ATR of $2.50. You're a day trader. You're going to hold the stock maybe for a day, perhaps two at the most. It's your goal to try and squeeze out $5 of profit out of IBM. Well, if it only has an ATR of $2.50, do you think $5 is a realistic profit goal? Probably not. Would $1.50 be more realistic? Sure. Would $2 be realistic? Sure. Once you start to exceed the ATR, then you start to get out of the realm of the normal movement of the stock. Here's an example. You know, sometimes when a stock is breaking out, what I'll use is 1.5 times the average true range of whatever I'm trading. So for instance, if I'm using the daily chart, if I'm a swing trader and I'm using a daily chart, I might use 1.5 times the daily ATR as my profit target over two days or two time frames. On the flip side, I might use 1.2 times the ATR as my stop loss over two time frames. Or in this case, if we're talking days, it would be obviously days. So again, the goal here is I'm trying to make 1.5 times the ATR in two days, which is realistic. If the stock moves $2.50, you know, I'm trying to make <clears throat> $4 or so of profit. I think that's pretty fair, a little bit less than that. On the downside, remember, I want to risk less. So again, I'm using 1.2 times the ATR. This isn't set in stone. These are just some general guidelines that you can use. ATR also helps you to know what you're getting into ahead of time. What I mean by that is, let's say you buy a stock, you're looking at the charts, you know, you've checked out your moving averages, you've checked out your Bollinger Bands, you sort of know how volatile the stock is, you're okay with it, but you really don't have a hard dollar amount to sort of reference. In other words, let's say you start to trade Google. 
And we'll take a look at Google's ATR in just a second. But what if Google's ATR, maybe let's call it $8 a day or $10 a day, that might be a little bit much for you. Let's assume that you were going to risk, I don't know, let's assume you have a big account, you're risking 1,000 shares of Google. Well, if it has an $8 ATR per day, which we'll see in just a second, that is $8 thousand dollars of potential P&L movement you could have each day. You might say, you know what? The ATR is a little high here. I'm either going to A, scale back my allocation, maybe buy 500 shares or 200 shares, or if it's not enough risk for you, you can either scale up your allocation, maybe risk 1,500 or 2,000 shares, or find a different stock. The beautiful part is you can combine ATR with the other tools we've talked about. You can combine it with moving averages, Bollinger Bands, and other tools or sort of indicators that you use to trade more effectively and increase your probability, profitability, and reduce your losses. Let's take a look at a practical application of ATR. All right, guys, so up on your screen here is IBM. We just talked about it. Let's take a look at what the ATR is of this particular stock. Now, I sort of expanded the ATR area down here. Normally, you don't have to blow up that area so big, but just to for, for display purposes so you can see what we're doing here and, and sort of zoom in on the oscillations, I expanded it. Obviously, you can see my big black pointer there. Hopefully, you guys all can make that out. Take a look. So, we're in a daily chart right now, and the ATR of IBM is $2.53. If you go back in time, remember I say it's a good idea to take a look, you know, at least one year back. Um, let's look at a year's worth of IBM. And you can see, you know, $2.53 or $3, that's pretty normal for IBM. It has its spikes. You can see here in November when the stock was gapping down. Um, this is actually late October. I'm sorry. You could see ATR was rather high. That has to do with this big gap. And you can see any time the stock has gapped, ATR tended to be, you know, pretty abnormal. So again, one of the things you do want to watch out for, if a stock does gap and the ATR looks high, take the average over the past year and figure that as sort of the normal movement for IBM. So in this case, I would say somewhere between 250 and 275 is the normal daily trading range of IBM. So let's just say that I wanted to get into a swing trade. How much would I anticipate making on IBM? Well, again, the good goal, if I'm using 1.5 times half of $2.50, about $1.75 or so, I might say, you know what, I'm trying to make, I don't know, $4 or so to the upside on IBM over a two-day period. Was that realistic in this most recent run? Sure it was. Let's zoom in right quick here and just take a look at the two-day move. Here on the 23rd of December, IBM was at about $1.80 Already, 180 and 50 cents. Over the course of two days, well, the stock climbed to about 183.62. Okay, the reality is we had about a three dollar move here over the course of two days. I want to caution you: don't get too aggressive. What you might even do is say, you know what? If I can capture one ATR or one times the average daily movement in a swing trade. That's a really good profit target. Maybe to the downside, you might say, hey, I'm willing to risk you know, 0.8 times the ATR, you know, or maybe $2.10 somewhere in there to the downside. Um, those might be more conservative sort of estimates. Let's take a look at Google here and see how much Google trades. Wow, look at this. Take a look down here. The average daily trading range of Google is $14.25. Now, granted, it's a $1,000 stock. You know, um, so this is like 1.3% that it tends to move per day, a little bit less than that. So in reality, it's not terribly volatile, but you need to be prepared. Depending upon how big your account is, you need to be prepared for a $14 per day move. That is normal for Google, okay? And, and if you take a look at some of these bars right here, for instance, on the 20th, of December. The high of the day was 1101. The low of the day was 1088. So it really was pretty darn close, $13 to its average trading range. Google also has a tendency to gap. Remember, ATR figures in those gaps. So, you know, if you don't see it in the intraday movement, sometimes carrying over to the next day is where you'll see that, that sort of typical ATR. Let's look at some other stocks. Um, here's Disney. 
Uh, I, I typically use Disney because it tends to be a little bit of a lower volatility stock, but not always. Disney is a $75 stock with an ATR of about a dollar. Okay. Again, it's really nice. At a quick glance, I could say, hey, you know what? Um, Disney is in my price range at $75. At a dollar ten normal average daily movement, I know that you know I can sort of tolerate if I bought, let's just say, a, I don't know, a hundred shares of this thing. Well. I'm going to gain or lose about a hundred bucks, right? Hundred shares times a dollar. That's where I get that math from. Okay. So the ATR is really nice, a quick glance at sort of letting us know what our risk is. And take a look here. If you go to a weekly chart, for those of you who like to hold stocks for a week's period of time, well, what you'll notice is you would think, well, wow, a week is seven days, so shouldn't it be seven dollars? And the answer is no. Um, remember, stocks don't go straight up or down in one direction. If, if Disney sort of stays in one area, you could see here it's weekly ATR, the most the, the average it moves in about a week, is about $2.36, only double what it does in a day. So again, this is awesome because think about it, right? If you were a swing trader in Disney and all of a sudden you're thinking, you know what, I'm going to hold on to the stock for a week. Um, I'm going to try and make seven bucks. Well, that's kind of unrealistic. Two dollars might be a more realistic goal for you. A stop loss might also be right around that two dollar level or less if you're a weekly type trader. And again, it goes on for months or you can even reduce it down to the minute. Disney moves about three cents in one minute. Uh, and again, it works on any single chart. Let me show you something else here, and this is rather interesting. Uh, let's go to a daily chart. We're taking a look at Yahoo. Okay, Yahoo is not terribly volatile. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Not terribly volatile. Um, you know, 77 cents on average per day. Stock is about 40 bucks a share. Here's the other way that you can use ATR. Remember I said to sort of look at the normal volatility of a stock over the past year? And you can see here with Yahoo, believe it or not, relatively speaking, I mean, prior to this past week, Yahoo was closer to its high range. You can see I've highlighted or clicked on sort of the, the past, you know, month's levels of ATR. Let's call it about a dollar. That's actually on the high side for Yahoo. So what you might use this for is to also reference exactly just how volatile the stock is right now. Is it acting more more, more volatile than it does normally? Less volatile than it does normally? And that, my friends, if you're an options trader, might be a clue for you to say, you know what, I'm going to trade options on this thing. Um, if volatility is heavy, maybe options have more premium. And therefore, if I'm more of an advanced options trader, maybe I can get some more uh, credit for my spreads that I'm doing. Again, I'm giving you guys a little, a little tease there for your options traders. But again, the ATR, an awesome, awesome tool. One last stock we'll take a look at here, one that also tends to be um, a little bit more volatile, Netflix. Now, <laughs> take a look at this. Remember that big spike um, you know, in Netflix? This is back in, in October. Look at the ATR, it sort of jumped. You know, what's funny is people talk about the, the craziness of Netflix and how volatile it is. But what's really fascinating is if you sort of look over this whole entire year, Netflix's average true range has been about nine to 10 bucks. So being the calm, cool, and collected investor that we want to be, use ATR to bring things down to common sense, to simple terms. You know, uh, people could be going crazy. I, you know, Netflix has gone bonkers. It's going to move twenty, thirty, fifty dollars. Okay, great. But what does it move in a day? About nine bucks. Therefore, if you're a swing trader, a realistic target for you might be nine dollars, not twenty, thirty, or forty. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this session of trading tips. I want you to check out our sponsor, First Hour Trading. Sign up for a free 30-day trial at firsthourtrading.com. Remember, you can use the first 59 minutes of the day to trade and take the rest of the day off. Check them out, firsthourtrading.com. We'll see you next time.